On this week's edition of the Bronson Health Chat on WKZO, we have a discussion of colorectal cancer, awareness of colorectal cancer, who should be screened, what are the screening options, and some misconceptions about screening. We're joined by Dr. Edward Atawi, Bronson Colon and Rectal Surgery. Good morning. Good morning, Ken. Thank you so much for joining us. So what is colorectal cancer? Are there common symptoms we should be aware of? Uh, colorectal cancer, um, uh, morning again to you, Ken. Colorectal cancer is a disease that is caused by an um, uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in the last part of the digestive system. We call it the colon and rectum. This is the waste management area, if you may think, of all the foods that we eat prior to expelling it to the outside. Common symptoms that are related to uh, this uh, disease is relative to the degree of growth of the cancer cells. Initially, uh, someone may experience some diarrhea or some minor blood in their stools, sometimes pain if the tumor grows enough or to obstruct uh, the flow of the process of food, uh, sometimes fatigue or bloating or even weight loss. Having said all these, it is not up to you to diagnose. I wish that your uh, listeners don't just self-diagnose themselves with everything that I just say. It is always uh, uh, very important that they check with their providers before they just listen to me on the radio and start making these uh, assumptions. So I always encourage anybody who has, uh, 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 you know, or, or is thinking about this to always check with their providers uh, prior to making any medical decisions. Who is at risk for colon cancer? Well, uh, colon cancer has been documented at all ages, unfortunately. But the majority or the most at risk are those who are over the age of 50. And most recently, in the past couple of years, uh, we've seen studies that have shown also patients over the age of 45. As uh, age is the biggest risk factor, uh, people also with family history of colon cancer um, uh, or people who've had uh, prior encounters with these cancers or polyps would be considered at high risk. If I fall into that increased risk category, which I do as far as age goes, is there anything I can do or someone can do to improve my odds of not getting colorectal cancer? Absolutely. If there's a question I would like your listeners to listen uh, to the answer to, I would uh, like to uh, have them listen to this part. And that is part of the biggest part of my talk today, and thank you for allowing me on your show. And uh, basically, I'm here to relate to your listeners that the majority of cases, this type of growth can be found and treated prior to it becoming problematic at all. By, this, by doing this, you, pa patients or people can greatly improve the odds of not having to deal with the sometimes life-threatening or life-altering treatments that are needed down the road. Uh, I think the first and the best thing to do is always have a good discussion with one's primary care provider, uh, the, the doctor, the nurse providers, or the, um, or the PAs that see them in the office. And while, while, while we go for the well checks, all providers have a wealth of information to provide about screening techniques, uh, ways that we can check for this before it happens. Uh, so screening techniques I just mentioned would be something like a simple lab. Sometimes they send a stool sample. Um, uh, physical exams are helpful to start, uh, but I think the most important thing is requesting a colonoscopy, which is considered uh, the gold standard method to check, see, remove, diagnose, and sometimes treat these polyps and tumors for good. Uh, other things that one can do on their own is uh, lifestyle. Uh, maintaining weight in a healthy weight range is very important. That decreases the risk of having those, ca uh, uh, having those cancers. Exercising, even walking 20 minutes a day for four times a week has been also shown to decrease the risk of developing those cancers. Avoiding red meat um, and adding green uh, leafy vegetables to the diet are very helpful uh, long term. So now that you've explained some of the uh, screening options and things we can do to reduce our risk, at what age should we get screened? Well, um, screening options are plenty. Um, like I mentioned earlier, a stool sample, sometimes as simple as it's just a stool sample to check for abnormal DNA coming from those cells is a, a recent test that has been added to the armamentum of things that we do. Uh, X-rays, your doctor sometimes may order an X-ray or a CT scan that looks at the images in the colon. 
But I think more importantly, and the gold standard screening method, which would be a colonoscopy. And that's a procedure where one goes to sleep. Um, there will be an anesthesiologist or a, a nurse that will help them go to sleep. Uh, and the physician, uh, someone like me, will take a look inside the colon and rectum, and they will take a small, tiny camera. And not only they're able to see, but they're able to remove or sample any abnormal areas. Uh, the screening starts, like I said, at the age of 50 for the average individual, and it happens once every 10, 10 years in most patients. But sometimes we need to do it more frequently in patients who have been deemed high risk. And Dr. high risk, sorry, high risk would be someone who's, you know, that we found some precancerous cells in them or someone who has that family history, like I mentioned. Uh, Dr. Atawi, what about non cancerous colorectal concerns? Do you treat those? Um, at Boston Colorectal Surgery, in addition to screening, we provide a broad spectrum of treatments for diseases of colon and rectum. Uh, we treat diverticulitis, hemorrhoids, colitis, intestinal complaints that deal with digestive issues such as control of the bowel movements, constipation, uh, abdominal pain, or rectal pain, or anal pain. We provide medical help when needed and surgical help if wanted. Doctor, how can one reach your office if they'd like more information about a referral or screening or something we've talked about here on the segment this morning? Uh, well, I can always direct your listeners to our hospital website, uh, bronsonhealth.com, uh, Bronson Colorectal Surgery. You can, one can also call our office, 269-341-4890. Uh, but again, I always ask all my patients to check with their primary care providers and make sure that uh, their ducks are all in a row, and uh, we'll be very happy to, uh, to help them any way that is needed. We've been talking about colorectal cancer on this week's Bronson Health Chat on WKZO with Dr. Edward Atawi from Bronson Colon and Rectal Surgery. And I want to thank you for taking time to join us and sharing this information on a very important topic. Kenneth, thank you very much, and uh, you have a good day, sir.